Hey guys, it's Austin here, and today I got a video for you, and we are talking about the top 5 upcoming PS4 games to be released in 2019, and we got a game for everybody on here. We even got some PS exclusives, we have two of them, so I made sure the majority of the list will be games available on all platforms, but there are just two PlayStation exclusives you can't ignore. They're huge games coming out in 2019, so they have to be on this list. But we got some horror, we got some action, we got... Like I said, we got a little bit of everything, so before I get into it, make sure to check out my other weekly countdowns. I do it like this. I do a lot of top fives, mostly. I'm starting to get into some top tens, so stay tuned for those. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I'll see you guys in the video. Starting off our list at our number five spot, we have The Division 2. Now, I wasn't a big fan of the original Division game, because the enemies felt a lot like bullet sponges. You could just empty clips into these people's heads, and it was like they had a tank for a helmet. And the missions just felt repetitive and unrewarding. You know, you could do a hour-long mission and get 5 XP for it. Of course, it wasn't that extreme. That's just me over-exaggerating. But that's what it felt like. I really did feel like I could be doing a long mission or at least a boring mission over and over again. And I would get hardly anything for my work. And it was like, dude, like, why am, why am I playing these missions? Why aren't I just in the dark zone having fun? I'm trying to level up here and I get like 10 XP for every mission I do. But speaking of the Dark Zone, I really enjoyed that in the Division 1, and I feel like as long as they bring the Dark Zone back into the Division 2, not only would the multiplayer be as much fun as the first one, if not better, if they built upon the main and side missions, making them a little more compelling to play, and gave out more rewards for finishing those missions, we could have a really great game on our hands. I feel like the Division 1 was close to being as good as it was supposed to but all the problems with the gameplay i felt like it kind of helped held it back a bit and if the division 2 can kind of take the gameplay from the division 1 make some minor changes it'll take it up 10 notches and as long as they make sure the glitches from the original division don't really make a mark in the sequel i think the division 2 could definitely be a, a top five game for the year now for our next spot we have a playstation exclusive we have days gone Really, the only thing I have to say about this game is it's always had my attention. All my subs, they know I'm a huge fan of zombies, and really, if anything has zombies in it, I'm interested. Just straight up from the start, you say, hey, Austin, there's zombies in here. I'm, I'm on board. I want it. Just watching the trailers and the E3 gameplay, just the absolute chaos that is going on, it's so fast-paced, and I feel like that's something really important in a zombies game because games like the original Resident Evils, at least in my opinion, they're a little more horror and a lot less fast-paced, like, there's zombies coming at you, oh my god, oh my god, what am I gonna do? Like, it doesn't really make you think quickly because you can kind of take your time with it, you're just scared. And with the later Resident Evils, it was a lot less being scared and just thinking quickly. And I feel like Days Gone is going to kind of bridge the gap between the two and make the perfect amount of over-the-top action with over-the-top horror. And it's going to meet in the middle and we have Days Gone. And what makes all of that better is that it's an open world full of zombies. And it really makes you conscious of your own decisions because the AI that Ben Studio made these zombies to be like, it's not just a whole bunch of zombies coming at you, you kill them all, you're done. The more noise you make, the more zombies from across the map are going to come after you. And the less you shoot, you still just have to find a way to get rid of those zombies. You know, if you don't really defend yourself, the zombies are going to keep coming after you until you get away. But if you defend yourself going all out, balls to the walls, just spraying them down with a machine gun, you're going to attract 10 times more zombies. So you really got to think about what you should do in certain situations. And you can even see that in the E3 gameplay trailer. In my opinion, Days Gone could be really good, but I think it's definitely going to be a game people think about when it first comes out. It's definitely going to put a mark on YouTube, at least for its release month. And then after that, I feel like it's going to start to die off unless they start releasing DLCs. But other than that, I feel like it's going to be here and it's going to be great. And then it's going to be gone. Up next, we have the Resident Evil 2 remake. And Resident Evil 2 is one of the greatest survival horror games of all time. Now, that's not just my opinion speaking. I personally believe it is, but many other gamers believe that it is. I'm saying like 8 out of 10 people who played that game probably enjoyed it, and most of them think that it's one of the greatest survival horror games of all time. And it's another game taken from an old console, remastered from the ground up, and pure PS4, Xbox One quality graphics. 
I'm not saying just slap HD on there and call it a remaster. It's literally from the ground up built to be on those two consoles. But what sets this remake apart from the other ones like the Crash and Spyro and the coming up Final Fantasy VII remake is this is a horror game. Graphics matter a lot more in a horror game than they do in a children's game like Spyro and Crash or a turn-based RPG or JRPG like Final Fantasy. Like I said in my Resident Evil Revelations 2 review for the PS Vita, I compared it to the PS4 version a lot. One of the major problems with the game was it looked like garbage. Compared to the PS4 version, when I would play on the PS4 and go to the Vita when I'm traveling and play it, it wouldn't scare me anymore. It was just weird looking objects. Like I didn't see them as scary monsters because the graphics were just that bad. When I see it in PS4 quality, it's actually frightening. It would just take me out of the experience seeing them all muddy and gray on the PS Vita version. And to see Resident Evil 2, a game that was already scary to me, see it in PS4 quality, I'm gonna be shitting my pants, guys. It's that simple. You're just gonna shit your pants. The people buying this game are gonna be the original people that played it the first time, that have the nostalgia factor, and they wanna see it revived in the new beautiful quality it's gonna be coming out in. But the first person view was added so it can kind of fit with the new Resident Evil games that's gonna be coming out. But not only that, it'll also introduce this game to the generation that kind of grew up with first person game for them to remake it in a first person view it caters directly to everybody who came after the original release and the original game by itself caters to everybody who played the first one okay for everyone that just listened to that i didn't mean to say first person i was talking about third person so every time i say first person in that whole statement just pretend i said third person and let's get back to the video for our number two spot, we have a very mysterious game. It has no trailer, no gameplay, no teaser, no nothing. All we know is the setting and title. It's Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. And a lot of people know Star Wars is now, like the games, are now owned by EA. And that's very disappointing. I'm disappointed with that too. But I feel like EA has realized that they have to be a good developer. They have to cater to the audience. Oh, now before you guys start commenting about Star Wars Battlefront 2, let me explain. EA has been scumbags for a long time now, but Star Wars Battlefront came out and they were scumbags. The game was released because of the Force Awakens hype. It had barely any content, had no Force Awakens DLC. Now I know that's weird I'm asking for DLC, but it had no content, so at least give me an option to get something. And they the reason they released the game was because Force Awakens came out and Star Wars was cool again. And they're not even going to release DLC or actual in-game items about that movie that really the whole hype wall was made from. I don't understand. It doesn't make sense. And that's why the game flopped. It had no content and people just didn't care. And they kind of made up for that by making all the DLCs free. I copped up on a free season pass. That's actually great from EA because I didn't touch that game months after the release of it because I got the PS4 bundle because I wanted that Darth Vader PS4. But I didn't play that game ever again. Found out the season pass was free. I played that game like hell. I loved playing as the new heroes for Heroes vs. Villains. I loved playing the new maps. I loved it. It was a lot of fun. And it definitely got people on their game again, spending money. And it was just a good marketing strategy. So when I heard Star Wars Battlefront 2 had no DLC, I was thinking, man, this game is going to be 10 times better than the first one. Because DLC saved the first one. If they're saying they don't even need DLC in this one, I like that confidence. But I didn't pre-order, of course. I waited to see how it went. And then I realized, with all the rest of the world, we all noticed no content in the game. Everything is, you gotta unlock it through 7,700 hours of gameplay time. And if you don't want to do that, you got to unlock it in a supply drop. That's where all the DLC went in the supply drops. So EA kind of like apologized for that. They took supply drops out. They made the chances better. They put them back in. People still hate it. People stop caring about that game. Now they haven't done anything to kind of save that game yet. I don't know if they ever released the season pass for free because I never bought the game. I saw how poor it was received and I just said, fuck it. But to my knowledge, nothing has been done to kind of save that game. So I think they've noticed that they kind of just can't 
put Star Wars on the title, put EA on the logo, and then sell it. So I feel like they're actually going to put effort into this game. If there's DLC, I feel like it will be reasonable. I don't think it's going to be, you know, like a $100 season pass, something crazy that like Call of Duty does with the $50 season pass with a $60 game for a bonus map and then the four DLCs. You know, I kind, I kind of find that ridiculous that people are still doing it. I think EA is just going to release maybe three DLCs for it if they do release DLCs. I don't think it's going to be anything too crazy. But you'll definitely be playing as a Jedi after the events of Revenge of the Sith. That's what was confirmed, and that's all that was confirmed. Sadly, we don't know anything else, but I think the mystery of it makes me even hyped more. Now, before we get into the actual number one spot, pause the video and comment down below what you think will be the number one spot for my list of the top five upcoming releases for the PlayStation 4 in 2019. And if you get it right at the end of the video, I want you to go back to your comment, reply to it, and say, I got it right. Of course, you don't have to say the, that exact thing. Just indicate to me that you got it right somehow. And I don't know. That just shows you're fucking badass. That's all. Anyway, let's just get into our number one spot already. I've been teasing you guys the whole video. We have The Last of Us Part 2. Really, if you know anything about games, what other game could have been the number one spot? The Last of Us Part 2, in my opinion, is sequel to one of the most emotional and cinematic games ever made. And of course, The Last of Us 2 is going to be made by Naughty Dog, and Naughty Dog's recent track record with the whole Uncharted series, Last of Us, Uncharted DLC, Naughty Dog really hasn't done anything wrong in my opinion. They've done really great games lately for the past 10 years. They haven't really let me down. And not only is it great gaming experiences, I'm never really interrupted by game breaking glitches. Even on day one, they release solid, quality, finished games on their release date. And it's taken Naughty Dog a long time to kind of start the development of this game and to kind of reveal and start to tease it. And that shows that they only wanted to make this sequel if they truly felt that the last of a story could be explored deeper without ruining its image. Recently, when games start to be successful, right away the company wants to start making a sequel to it no matter what. Even if it's going to be a horrible sequel and it's just a cash grab, they still make it anyway because it's going to make them lots of money. It just makes me respect Naughty Dog even more for them to kind of think twice about making a sequel to this game because The Last of Us Part 2 whether it's great or it's horrible, it's going to make them millions of dollars. And I know The Last of Us Part 2 does have some development problems. They're, they are having issues and they are delaying the game further and further. And obviously that's not a good sign for a game. But if you look at that situation in the right way, it shows that Naughty Dog cares about their game. Because yes, there's game breaking bugs in it. Naughty Dog is stopping. They're taking the time to fix those bugs before they go on and get any closer to that release date. And they delay the game further because they see this game is not suitable for an audience. They need to make sure it is the best possible product they can do. Because Naughty Dog does not release games every year. They release games every few years. So they need to make sure when they do release a game, it's amazing. And they can live off of that until their next game comes out. Anyway, that's it for me. That Those are my top 5 upcoming releases for the PS4 in 2019. If you want to see games made by Naughty Dog on my channel, check out my Uncharted 4 walkthrough. It'll be in the top right, just go ahead and click the card. Anyway, make sure to also check out my other weekly countdowns. I'm going to start doing these top 5 videos and top 10s at least once a week because I feel like these are really fun videos to make. They're a lot higher production quality and I feel like we all just have a great time watching and making them. Have a wonderful day everybody and peace out. I'll see you guys in the next video.